Good morning. This morning I'm going to show you how to trim a tabletop. Now this particular tabletop is a conference tabletop. This shape was given to me by somebody who asked me yesterday how to go about this. And so I decided to use their conference top as, uh, in my blog this week. I modified it slightly. Um, it, as I received it, this was a squared off end. I put a semicircle here and here just to make it a little more difficult. And I also added some grooves. I used the follow me tool to do that um, because the trim I'm going to add is going to have a tongue that's going to fit in there and align the trim. We're not going to concern ourselves with how to model or construct the tabletop. We're just going to use it um, as a vehicle to trim. But I think once you see how to trim a top like this, you'll also see how to design a top like this and how to model a top like this. So we'll just assume that the tabletop itself is given. The other thing is the, the trim that I want to put on here, since this tabletop is an inch and a half thick, the trim itself is going to be an inch and a half thick. It's going to stick out from the edge of the tabletop three inches. And on its top front surface, it's going to have a one and one quarter inch round over. This groove, by the way, is centered on the edge and it's three eighths of an inch by three eighths of an inch. Alright, first thing we need, if we're ever going to use the offset tool, first thing you want to have is a face or path to follow. And the easiest way to get that here, or, or an easy way to get there here, is one of two one of two ways. I'll show you the most difficult way first, and then an easier way if your tabletop happens to be sitting on the red green plane. If it's not sitting on the red green plane, you can use the first technique I'm going to show you. All right. So the first technique is to take the rectangle tool, click on the face of this component, the tabletop, click it once, drag it end on the face in the component. That assures that the rectangle I draw is co-surface or co, you know, it's, got, it had, it's, it's on the same plane, coplanar, as the tabletop's top. Once I've done that, what I want to do is I want to drag the edges out so, such that they extend beyond the tabletop. So in this case, I drag it along the green Similarly, in this case, I drag it along the green. I want to make sure I'm on the green. This one I want to drag along the red. I want to make sure I'm on the red. There we go, on red. In this case, I want to drag it along the... Whoops! Wrong drag. Come out here and do this. Along the red. All right, now... I'm going to select this rectangle and I'm also going to use the it, I'm, I selected the rectangle the, the surface plus its perimeter I'm going to use the control key and also select the component the tabletop and I'll use the edit intersect faces with selection and what that did is it gave me this face and the perimeter of that face now I don't need this part, I can delete it, and I'll also delete these lines. Now, notice I could have done that if this tabletop is sitting on the red-green plane. I could have just started on the red-green plane, perhaps at the origin, and drag a rectangle like this, and done the same thing. The only difference would be that my surface that I want to follow would be on the bottom instead of the top. And, of course, it requires that the tabletop be sitting on the red-green plane. Okay, now that I've got my surface that I want to follow, I can go to the Layers box, and I'll just unclick the tabletop so that it's no longer showing. 
All I've got is the surface itself. Now remember, the surface was on top of the tabletop. So when I draw, what I'm next going to do is draw the cross section of the trim I want to put on here. So it has to start at the top and go down. The other thing I want to do is whenever I draw the cross section of trim that's going to be used in a follow me tool situation, I want to try and draw it at the center line or the center point of a straight line and I want to draw it orthogonal to the plane that I'm going to drag it around. So what that means is I want to start with the line tool at the center line here click go down all right now the groove is we'll do a little arithmetic here the groove is 3 eighths of an inch by 3 eighths of an inch so if I subtract 3 eighths from an inch and a half which is the thickness of the tabletop and divide by 2 I get 9 sixteenths so I'll just type in 9 sixteenths and now I can zoom in here I don't want to zoom in too much because I'll need to see what I'm doing here and now I'm going to go back along the green 3 eighths of an inch now I can come down here come down 3 eighths of an inch and out 3 eighths of an inch that created the groove another 9 sixteenths down here to get me to the total of an inch and a half and I remember I wanted the trim to come out from the table edge three inches so I'll just draw a line out here three inches I'll come back up along the blue this time an inch and a half and I'll finish up now that gives me a surface to work with what I have to do with that surface now is I have to put my quarter round on it my quarter round is an inch and a quarter so I'll start with the tape measure come in an inch and a quarter and I'll come down an inch and a quarter and now I'm going to use I have my choice here I can use the arc tool or the circle tool I'm going to let you use the arc tool offline and find out what kind of trouble you get into I will tell you that you don't want to use the arc tool but you might want to try it offline to see what kind of trouble you get into I'm going to use the circle tool and I'll get rid of the pieces I don't want and I gotta be careful here There's a little piece down here I don't want. And let's see, is that true up here? Nope. Okay, looks like I've got everything there. I can get rid of this. And that's the cross section of the trim I want. I can get rid of my guides. And so that's going to go all the way around the table. Notice that this is sort of orthogonal. This, this cross section is orthogonal to the front face of the tabletop. If I bring that in here a moment, there's the tabletop. And it's orthogonal to this front face. Orthogonal meaning it's at right angles. That's what I want. Okay, let me get rid of the tabletop. Whenever I use the Follow Me tool, you can do it one of two ways. Either choose a surface that you want to be the path or a line. Well, the easiest thing to do in this case is to use the surface. So I'm going to choose that surface. And what it's going to do is it's going to follow the periphery of that sur surface, which would have been the same as choosing the line that outlines that surface. But choosing the surface itself is the easiest thing to do. So I choose that. Then I choose the Follow Me tool hover over this outline and click once. Okay, now notice 
that it created what I wanted, but it created it uh, with the reverse face. So what I'll do is I'll select the whole, well, first of all, I'll get rid of this part. I no longer need it. Now I'll get rid of this. I'll select all of this, right click and say reverse faces. And now I've got the right face. Before I do anything else, I'm going to save this. And the reason is that I'm going to come back to it again and again and again. So I'm, the way I'm going to save is that I'm going to make it a component. I don't care about the name of the component. I simply want to make it a component so that it gets into the component library. Notice in the component library, in the in model library, I have the tabletop without the trim. And I have this thing called component one, which is the trim. Once it's in the library, I can always retrieve it. So I can do anything I want to what's out here, and I don't change that situation. So what I'm going to do out here is I'm going to explode it again. All right, now I want to look at this and observe the symmetry. This is, by the way, a study in, in um, looking ahead, trying to plan out what it is you're going to do, try to minimize the amount of work. By the way, there's nothing wrong with leaving this just the way it is. I mean, you may want to clean up some things like hide lines like these lines over here or smooth them or something in here as well. I mean, this, this could be the finished trim of your table. But a more um, studious student would want to go and make all the little pieces and put, make them components. And um, that's what we're going to do now. There's a fair amount of work in doing that, but uh, in the end it's uh, more rewarding. It also gives you a cut list, which is more accurate. So let's do that. The first thing I'm going to do, now that I've got this thing saved and I've got this blown up, is I'm going to zoom in quite a bit and I'm going to focus on these two parts right here. Notice these two parts are used only once in this model. In other words, this one's only used once and this one's only used once. These two are used twice here and here. And these two are used twice here and here. These two are not the same as these two because they're terminated differently and they have different lengths, but they're used here and here and of course this U shape is used here and here and we're gonna to have to decide how we're gonna actually cut that up we'll save that for later right now what I want to do is focus on these two pieces here now I said I chose I modified this uh, trim this table a little bit to make it more difficult and I did and I made it a lot more difficult um, not to mention these end things one of the things I did was because we put these tongue and grooves in here, you'll notice that a lot of lines are missing. This line from here to here is missing. If these are two different pieces, that would be a cut joint. So that line needs to be there. Also here, also underneath here, and also underneath the bottom. And all those have to be added in. And you might ask, why did they not get added in in the you know when the offset or when the follow me tool did its work well let's look at the hidden geometry now, let me turn that off for the moment if I select this surface here it looks like the whole surface is selected right from there down to the front but let me unselect that. Now view hidden geometry. And now select this surface. Notice it doesn't select all this. It only selects this. So when this is being constructed in SketchUp, SketchUp looks at this and says it's all one surface. The only lines needed to define it are the outside lines and the inside hidden lines. It doesn't need this line to define that surface. On the other hand, that surface right there 
is different than that surface right there, and therefore it needs this line as well as the outside lines here. It's unfortunate that the algorithms inside the software does this, because now we've got to add all these lines back in. I'm going to do most of that offline, but I'm going to get you started with the, these endpoint, these end guys here. So let me look at this the way we were looking at it again, front ISO. And as I said, I'm going to focus on these. First thing I'm going to do is go in there and add those lines. Because if I don't do that and I start manipulating this thing, I'm going to lose surfaces. So I'm going to add this line from here to here. I'm going to add this line from here to here. And while I'm at it and I'm looking at it, I'll add this line from here to here. I'm going to flip this over. I've got to be careful. Make sure I get every single line. What you're trying to do is complete every line that needs to be completed just the way the chop saw would cut through this thing. And so now let's look on the inside see if I missed anything. Yep. Gotta get this one. Ever since they changed the icons in 2013, I have had a difficult time uh, finding the icons I want. I haven't yet gotten used to the new ones. All right, now I got to do that. I did it on this end. I've got to do it on this end as well. So bear with me. I'll do this one. This is the last time I will do this on video because it just You know, it's kind of mechanical stuff here. And you can, I think you see what it is I'm trying to do. I'm just trying to add that miter cut in there. And we'll go around the bush with this one. Make sure we got all of those. Okay. I think I, I think I got it all. So again, I'll look at this the way I want it. So what I just did was I fixed up these two. And um, I'm not going to fix up the other ones while you're looking at it. I'm going to go offline and do that. It's very tedious. And um, But what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish these two and show you what I'm doing. And then I'll come back and finish all the others. But I'll do this one online because that's a little different. All right. So now, remember, if I bring the component library in here, I save this whole thing. And um, so I can always get back to it. So. What I'm going to do now is the only thing I want are these parts. So I'm going to choose all that, delete it. Notice I'm going from right to left. So anything that's within the box, any part of anything that's within the box, 
it's selected and I can delete it. Now let's just examine this, make sure I got all the surfaces of this. I've got the ends, but I notice that the ends have the wrong color. Not a big problem. Get the select tool, select the ends, and say reverse face. Same here. Okay. Now essentially what I have is two parts. And I'm going to name these parts. This is going to be an outside part. This is an inside part. I'm going to name this one. Make it a component and call it outside closed end. The reason I'm using the word closed is because I also have an open end. And I will do the same thing here, make it a component, call it outside closed uh, let's call that inside. Closed end. Okay. I'm going to leave those two in place because they'll sort of be the marker uh, for everything else. Now, by the way, if I bring back in component one, which is the same thing as this. And I'll just choose that point right there. There we go. I've just aligned that so everything's back the way it was. Um, so I have those two components. I also have the whole component. And What I'm going to do next, offline, is I'm going to um, do all the rest of the parts except for these ends. I will come back for some piece of it to show you what I'm doing for, for some piece, but maybe, maybe these two pieces. I'll come back and do these online as well. Okay, I'll be back in a moment. Okay, I'm back. And I've got all the components made except the corner ones here. All of these are components. I'll just bring the entity info if I can. There we go. All right, so what I called this, I called this the inside straight trim because it goes straight and it's on the inside and that's the same one as this one over here inside straight trim this is the outside straight trim it's the same as this one here I call this the outside closed corner because it's the closed end and it's the corner of the closed end same here this is the inside closed corner. Same here. This is the inside closed end. That's the outside closed end. You'll notice all of these are solid components. And lastly over here I have one that I don't have. As I was going along I fixed up all of the bounding boxes. I left one unfixed and I'll show you some more over here when we do this but there's a bounding box that has to be fixed here whenever you have these components that don't lay along the red green or blue axis you tend to get bounding boxes that are not appropriate And if you don't fix them you will not get the appropriate um, cut lists in other words this will tell you you need a piece of wood this big 
by this big, by this thick. That's not what you want for this. This one is fixed. I already fixed that. That's the inside open corner. What I need to do is I need to bring these two over here, which I'll do in a moment, and then do the end. But before I bring these two over, I want to look at this end. So I'm going to take this out of here. The other thing I'm going to do is I created a layer with trim on it. I'm going to bring all the trim that I've got done out of here. Um, and let's do this. Let's uh, change the axis on this. Oh, is that the one that had the bad axis? Nope. This one. All right, let's change the axis on this. Right click, change axis. All you have to do is choose an end point, go along the same line along the length of this part, click, come back here at the beginning, and it wants to know where the green axis is now. So I'm going to send it out here. There you go. All right, now we can put these. I'll put these on the trim layer. And what I've got to deal with is this. Now, the question is, is how do I want to break this up? Um, you're not going to make this all out of one piece of wood. It wouldn't be very strong if you did. And it would consume an awful lot of wood. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make this in like three sections like one, two, three. But I'm going to have to make it two components because while this section of three would be the same as this section of three by symmetry, this section of three would be the same as this section of three by symmetry. This section of three would not be the same as this section of three. So I've got to make this in two components. So let me get at it. Uh, the way to do this is to first off start by completing some of these lines. So that's one, two, three parts. So I want to complete that line. And now I'm going to go underneath. One, two, three. So I got to get this line. One, two, three. One, two, three. Now, if I did this right, I hope I did, I can take this section out a few little pieces left. Take a look at this and see if I have everything. Um, I got to change reverse the face here. One, two, 
what I'm going to do is soften these. And to soften, I need to use the control key. Soften these. And I'll make this a component. And I'll call it um, I'll call this end curve. Now I gotta make this I gotta correct the axis here. So I'll do that again. Change axis. This time what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna choose that point, that point, and that point. And notice I get a bounding box that kind of captures that the way I want it. All right, now that part's the same as this one. This is the same as this one, which I got rid of. What I'm going to do now is get rid of this one. Little area, a little piece left. And let's examine this one real close. Got to change this. And like the other one, I'll soften these pieces here. And I'll make this a component called. I call the other end curve. I'll call this in. I'll call this inside curve. And again, we'll change the axis. There we go. Okay, now we need to copy one of these over here. Might as well do that right now. And we have to rotate it. It's not clear exactly how I'm going to rotate this. Um, I'll make an attempt. To, to guess. I'm going to put this right here. Grab that endpoint, see if I can connect it to this endpoint. That feels a little better. Now in order to tell whether I've got it correct or not, I'll bring the trim in. Well, I guess I can't until I bring this one over. But let's see what happens here.
that's looking pretty good. All right, now I'm going to copy this trim over. Saw something I didn't like there. I'm going to flip that along red. There we go. I think we got it. Not quite. Something's wrong. We'll find out in a second what that is. That is end curve. That's an end curve. So what we want to do, this one may have to be flipped along the red axis. That looks better. What I can do now is select that, that, and that, and copy it. it. Notice how I'm rotating. I'm taking that corner, take, going to the end point of that first line segment, and rotating it to the end point of that line segment. With a little luck, there you go. Uh, see what I did there. I forgot the control key.
So I'm taking that point, going to the end of that line segment, rotating it to that line segment. And move all those to the trim layer. Bring in my tabletop. I'm going to get rid of this temporary layer I had called component. There you go. Finally. That was a lot of work. there you have it. Okay, that's a wrap. I'll see you next week. Thank you.